right, my son. It's time to... He was considered one of the finest creative voices in the world of horror, and his work has stood the test of time. You saw it all coming. The wars, the murder, the madness. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Wes Craven movies. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at the most influential and successful films from Wes Craven's diverse filmography. As far as I can tell, your life revolves around your job, the occasional cocktail at the corner cafe, the classic late night movies, oh and scrambled eggs at 3 a.m. While also taking into account how strong a connection there is between those movies and Craven's equally diverse fan base. I would like you all to play from your heart. Do you understand me? Play like I know you can play. Number 10, Scream 2. Who'd want to do that? Sequels suck. This first sequel to Wes Craven's smash hit Scream not only satirized the validity of extended horror franchises, it also defied the odds by successfully building upon what was the director's most popular film in years. Here it comes! Two did well with fans and critics, despite script elements leaking the identities of the killers to an internet audience, and continued the series' mixture of frights, laughs, and self-referential humor. What's your favorite scary movie? Showgirls. Absolutely frightening. What's yours? Of course, the fact that so many members of the original cast returned to the scene of the crime also made it easy for Scream 2 to once again score big with horror fans in the late 90s. The way I see it, someone's out to make a sequel. Number 9, Red Eye. There is a man in my house who's trying to kill me. This 2005 film proved that Wes Craven didn't necessarily have to work within the realms of horror or fantasy to frighten us to our very core. <laughs> Red Eye was a taut and tension-filled thriller based very much in the real world, dealing with a hotel manager played by Rachel McAdams, who ends up in close quarters with a disturbed terrorist, portrayed to the hilt by Killian Murphy. Have you done something to my father? No, and it'll stay that way as long as you keep playing along. Both of these actors hold Red Eye together with their strong performances, and Craven proves to be a capable pacemaker as his film delivers nail-biting anxiety at 30,000 feet. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Number 8, Scream 4. You forgot the first rule of remakes, Jill. Don't f with the original. It had been over 10 years since Wes Craven had last visited the world of Sidney Prescott, with Scream 4 landing at just about the right place and time. Well, now I'm the special one. You'll slip, they always do. For one, it had been long enough for fans to look back on the first Scream with a sense of nostalgia. The original trilogy is based off of Sidney Prescott, but then she threatened to sue them if they used her story, so then they just started making stuff up. Secondly, Craven collaborated with original Scream writer Kevin Williamson on the screenplay, although Scream 3 writer Aaron Kruger was brought in for rewrites. This isn't a comedy, it's a horror film. People live, people die, and you better start running. This led to a film that, although not a financial windfall, did well with critics and fans. Sadly, it was Craven's last directed film before his death in 2015. New movie, new franchise. Number seven. The Serpent and the Rainbow. Don't let them bury me. I'm not dead. Perhaps one of the most underrated films in Wes Craven's extensive filmography, The Serpent and the Rainbow tackles the dark and mysterious world of voodoo. I, I saw it all. Were you sick? What was it that you felt, the symptoms? Bill Pullman stars as a Harvard anthropologist who visits Haiti on behalf of a large pharmaceutical company in search of a drug linked to the ancient practice of voodoo zombies. That's what I was thinking. A totally new anesthetic that could revolutionize medicine. Now what if this zombie drug could be discovered? Craven's film drips with atmosphere and boasts some intense performances from Pullman and his co-star Zakes Mokai as the commander of Haiti's local paramilitary force. You'll see it all. You'll feel it, the cold, in the coffin, it is 
worse. Much, much worse. If you're looking for a deep Craven cut to watch in the dark, this is the one. Remember, whatever happens, death is not the end. Number six, the last house on the left. That's your bad baby. <laughs> Keep telling yourself it's only a movie. I want you to take the gun and I want you to put it in your mouth. <laughs> and I want you to blow your brains out. No! Blow your brains out! The Last House on the Left shocked and horrified audiences back in 1972, and it continues to disturb newcomers today, thanks to its palpable atmosphere of sleaze and depravity. Why don't you just lay back and enjoy being in fear? The film takes inspiration from Ingmar Bergman's The Virgin Spring, as it describes the aftermath of the torture and sexual assault of two young women. You guys let the hell out of here. I'm going to start screaming. Craven's Take actually started life as an idea for a hardcore adult film, and even went so far as to cast adult pioneer Fred Lincoln in the role of Weasel. Hey, Sadie, what, what do you think the sex crime of the century was? Grimy and grim, this exploitation classic pulls no punches. We might be, uh, horny old pigs, but, uh, we ain't stupid. Number five. The People Under the Stairs. I don't want in, I want out. Sometimes in is out. Although the horror genre's golden age was starting to be tarnished back in 1991, no one told Wes Craven. You little Judas! What did I do with the mommy? It is time to clean house! A fan favorite. The People Under the Stairs is a unique film that not only follows a young African-American protagonist, it also balances the sort of laughs and scares Craven would become known for. He's dead, Leroy. Nothing scared to death. You sure? He thought he was white before? You should see that sucking now. The horror flick sees feral, cannibal children dwelling beneath the floorboards of a disturbed slumlord couple. The villains meet their match when placed against Poindexter Fool Williams, an inner city youth determined to discover the secrets behind these people under the stairs. You shoot me and you die too, man. And you better believe it. This one may have come out in the early 90s, but it holds up remarkably well. Number four, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Wes Craven first experimented with meta-humor and self-referential content in this early 90s entry into the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. I think you'd like to see us together again. In what, a romantic comedy? Just because it's a love story doesn't mean you can't have a decapitation or two. Fans who were tired of the smart-alecky Freddy Krueger of the late period Nightmare sequels would be given a very serious wake-up call here in Wes Craven's new Nightmare as the dream demon child murderer enters reality to stalk Heather Langenkamp, the actress who played Nancy in the original film. Until mommy gets back, whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Craven appears as himself in New Nightmare, alongside Robert Englund and Elm Street co-star John Saxon, creating a surreal world where death imitates art, and no one is ever safe from their deepest, darkest nightmares. Help me. Number three, the hills have eyes. Baby's fat, you fat, fat juicy. Wes Craven was on a roll when he released The Hills Have Eyes in 1977, working hard to cement himself as one of the most intense and visceral filmmakers of the decade. We'll be french fries, human french fries. We are not going to be french fries. The Hills Have Eyes follows a family whose ride breaks down while on a road trip. As you can imagine, they soon run afoul of a wandering group of violent cannibalistic maniacs. I'll eat the heart of your stinking memory. I'll eat the brains of your kids, kids! Craven ramps up the conflict and tension in this film, utilizing the desolate landscapes, creepy antagonists, and Don Peake's unsettling musical score. The Hills Have Eyes would haunt fans for years to come, even receiving a dreary, violent remake from director Alexandre Aja in 2006. Oh, big, fat, and juicy. 
Number two, Scream. You like scary movies? Uh huh. This is where it all hits home for many younger fans of Wes Craven's cinematic output, the landmark meta slasher known succinctly as Scream. Don't you blame the movies? Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. <laughs> Craven and screenwriter Kevin Williamson would strike gold with this smart, witty, and genuinely frightening take on classic slasher tropes, combined with a classic whodunit script that packs one hell of a final twist. Careful. This is the moment when the supposedly dead killer comes back to life for one last scare. Not in my movie. Scream may have been indirectly responsible for a glut of uninspired rip-offs after its 1996 release, but Craven's film thankfully holds up pretty well years later, thanks to its cast of talented actors delivering memorable, powerful performances. Don't do this again, I won't. Your call. <laughs> Scream is a 90s horror classic for the record books. Surprise, Sydney. <laughs> Number one, A Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm gonna split you in two. Could there really be any other film at the top of our list? Wes Craven may be gone, but he's left us with one iconic horror villain in the form of Freddy Krueger, that demonic, razor fingered man of our dreams. Please, God. This is God. The idea of A Nightmare on Elm Street was actually based on an article Craven had read about a rash of Khmer refugees who were suffering crippling nightmares that eventually led to their deaths. Come to Freddy. Combine this fascinating perspective with fantastic special effects and Robert Englund's classic performance as Kruger, and you have an enduring horror legacy that continues to haunt audiences of all generations. Are you there? I'm here. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.